Do you think that anything is likely to emerge from this Chintin Shivir which could signal that the Congress has understood how deep an abyss they are in and this is a party that wants to fight back? You know, there is a French saying, <laughs> uh, I'm not very good with my French even if I did it in school, uh, basically suggesting the more things change, the more they remain the same. That's exactly the condition in which the Congress finds itself now because, you know, you've got, uh, I've got the French saying, I was trying to get it right, plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. The more things change, the more they remain the same. Look, a Chintin Shivir is important for any party particularly when you've gone through a series of electoral debacles and you seem to be struggling this time for existence. It's an existential crisis. You've reached out to Udaipur because it's the only one of only two states where there's actually a Congress government where you have a chief minister. At a time like this, I think most congressmen know what the problem is. They know at the moment that they are ideologically confused. They know that they are organizationally weakened. And they know at the moment that there is a leadership vacuum. The, the, the problem is known. The question is, Rahul, the solution. The solution cannot be done through band-aid. The solution requires a patient in ICU going through surgery. Every Congress person that I have spoken to is going into this Chintin Shivir with very low expectations because their fear is that this will be another talking shop. There will be lots of talk about Desh Bachana hai, we need to you know, revolutionize the party, but are you willing to walk the talk on all three issues? Are you willing to end the ideological confusion? What is your approach towards Hindutva nationalism? Let it be very clear rather than speaking in different voices. Number two, what is your, what recipe do you have for organizational uh, chaos and, and, and the sort of ossification organizationally? And number three, the elephant in the room. What have you decided about the future leadership? I have just got a message that Kapil Sibyl has not gone. A member of the G23. Now I am not saying that Kapil Sibyl is a mass leader, but he's not gone there because remember he's the Was only... he invited? He was definitely invited. He's the only leader who has openly until now in the last few months said that we need a non-Gandhi at the helm. So he has chosen not to go. There are a number of others who also feel like him but are scared and afraid of raising the issue because there are also no easy options. Who are the options? If the Gandhis are to, if you want a non-Gandhi at, at the helm, who is that non-Gandhi mass connect leader who is actually going to galvanize the troops? You can't solve the problem only at the leadership level. You have to solve it organizationally. You have to solve it ideologically, Rahul. In, in a democracy, leadership emerges. Barack Obama came from nowhere. Bill Clinton came from nowhere. Tony it Blair came the, from nowhere. It is for the Congress party to decide to, uh, what you are saying is an issue that the Congress party is going to have to resolve, not through a ch Chintin Shivir alone, but over the next few months, because time is running out. There's no, I'll just give you one final point. I remember going to a uh, Chintin Shivir similar in 98. September 98, Sonia Gandhi had just taken over four or five months ago. There was a sense of, you know, uh, of concern, but there wasn't demoralization. And Sonia Gandhi in her own way was able to sort of rebuild the party step by step. Now there's demoralization. How are you going to revive a demoralized party? You have to energize it by providing some new dramatic ideas, which could include, as you said, the possibility of a completely new leadership. But in